Lori here with a video. <laughs> and not just any video, but a Scrap Your Scraps video, which I know you're going to be super excited about because those are the videos that probably are the most popular on my channel. So thank you for joining me for this Scrap Your Scraps video, which is super long overdue. Seriously, super long overdue. Um, thanks for sticking around and for subscribing to my channel, which just hit 10,000 subscribers, which I am freaking excited about. Sorry, I shouldn't say freaking, but I am. I'm super excited, <laughs> and I just wanted to say thanks for joining me. Today, I thought it would be fun to do a Scrap Your Scraps video and to make some cards. So what my plan is, is to use some paper to make some thank you cards because I am like super low on thank you cards and he needed some and when I do cards I love to batch process like make a ton of one kind and then just save them so that they're ready to go when I need them so today I thought I would make some cards and I had this paper pad that I was going to use for a class but didn't end up using for the class so I was like I will use this to make my scrap your scraps cards today um, and I honestly think you could use any paper in your stash like you don't need to use the same one but just grab some paper and I'm using six by six paper pads but you could also just use like 12 by 12 sheets that cut down um, really the options are endless so I wanted to keep it super simple to make this car these cards so what I did was I grabbed one paper pad and I pulled out 20 six by six pieces of paper I grabbed one pack of die cut embellishments from Jelly Bean Soup and one set of enamel dots and that is it that I used to make the cards. Well that and white paper of course, like I need white paper to actually fold the cards and make the cards. But other than that, 20 pieces of paper, one pack of die cuts and one pack of enamel dots and I thought I am just going to use this. so. I started by pulling out the 20 pieces of paper that I was going to use and I tried to pick colors and patterns that I felt would go well with the die cuts that I was using from Jelly Bean Soup. Um, I think that's where they're from. Now that I'm saying that, I'm not sure. I will double check. Um, so I pulled those out and I pulled out the sheets and I also pre-folded 20 cards. You could also use pre-folded cards if you wanted to, but I cut down the cards to the size that I wanted and I um, had those. And then what I decided to do was cut the paper down to create a piece, like a rectangle for each card that would give a quarter inch border around. Now, I don't wanna give you exact sizes for these cards, which might be a little annoying, so I'm sorry about that. But the reason I'm not is because I have these weird purple envelopes that I somehow found in my stash that are a really weird size. Like they're not a standard card size. They were just some, they're like slightly smaller than a standard card size. So they're not like an A1, A2, or whatever the different A element OP letters of card sizes there are. But they were a weird size. And I had like a ton of them. So I was like, I'm gonna make these cards so they fit into these envelopes. Because all of my regular cards don't fit in those envelopes. So I was like, I'm gonna make cards specifically for these purple envelopes, which are a weird size. So I'm not giving you the actual sizes of the papers that I cut down, and the reason for that is because um, if I gave you the actual sizes, it would be off for you if you were using preset card bases. So anyways, what I'm saying is I took the size of the rectangle front of the card, and I cut a rectangle from the scrap from the six by six paper pad that would fit perfectly on top of there, leaving a quarter inch border all the way around. So figure out what size your card base is and then cut those. And then all of the pieces that come, that came off of um, the, those papers, I put to the side. And I am planning on making 20 cards today that are no scrap your scraps cards, if that makes any sense. Like basically my plan was, that I would use 20 pieces of six by six paper pads and I would not have any scraps left over. So that was kind of my challenge for myself was like, this is gonna be a scrap your scraps type card where you're using scraps, but really you're using the scraps that you're making 
from the actual project. I hope that makes sense. By the way, I've had a concussion for the last like two and a half months. And so like that's also part of the reason why I haven't been posting much. Plus this year has just been chaotic. And so my brain is like not fully clear yet. So if something I say doesn't make sense, I'm really, really sorry. It's because I'm still healing from my concussion. But if you want, you can leave a comment below and I would be happy to answer and try to make sense of what I'm saying in this video. The other thing is that I just set up a new filming setup. And I don't think I have it fully figured out, which is why you see like a little bit off my desk. So next time I do a video, I'll make sure that it's better set up. So I'm trying to find a better solution so that there's not as much shadows, but obviously I didn't fix it for this video. But I really wanted to post the video still, so even though it wasn't like perfectly set up and in, in frame and lighted, I was like, you know what, I'm still going to post it because it's been a really long time since I've made a video. And I know that people will still want to see the video, so hopefully you do. If you don't, you can leave and come back later when there's a better filmed video. <laughs> so anyways, so after I put the rectangle on, I decided to use those thicker strips. I think they were like maybe a three and a quarter inch strip or whatever, and cut those down so that they would fit across the front of the cards, like what you can see here, which in essence is making more scraps. But don't you worry, no scraps were harmed in the making of this video, aka absolutely none of them went into the garbage, they all got used. The only thing that did go into the garbage, like full honesty here, was those white branding strips that were on the tops of the 6x6 paper pad pieces. Um, and honestly, you could, I could have probably figured out a way to use them but they were really flimsy and the white on them wasn't like super crisp white. Like it wasn't, I don't know how to explain it. It was like an off white a little bit and I could have used them to stamp the sentiments on but it didn't match the card bases so I didn't want to. So I did throw those out but please don't ban me from the Scrap Your Scraps Club just because I threw out my branding strips. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's my club. I can make the rules. Basically there are no rules. Do what makes you happy. So um, I used those strips and then basically what I did was after I had the like the largest piece and then the, the, the next largest piece, I went through the rest of the scraps that I had cut off and kind of just layered them up on top of each other looking to see what looked good and just kind of put it down. Now I didn't adhere anything yet because I wanted to make sure that I was using all of the scraps and basically I kind of had this like, I don't know how to explain this, this like odd audition process almost so I would pick the piece of paper up and be like does this look good here nope does this look good here nope maybe this one will look better and then I grab another piece and you can see I'm at, now adding a fourth piece and I just want to make sure that it looks good and it complements the other colors if it doesn't look good I trade it out because um, sometimes people ask me like hey Tori how do you mix patterns like how do you know that that red design will go with the purple polka dot which will go with a yellow stripe which will go with a green diagonal like how do you know that well it's I don't know how do I know that I just know which colors I like that look good together and I I know it's super bright and colorful and I was like I just want to kind of go with what looks good to my eye and I knew that these cards were gonna be multiple patterns and really bright, so I wasn't like putting too much pressure on myself. I was trying to make quick decisions because I was making 20 cards and I didn't want to be there forever. Like I was like, this is not, I don't want to be here forever. So <laughs> I'm going to just make quick decisions. Does it look good? Does it not look good? If it does, stick it down and go with your first gut. That's my other like tip for you. So my first tip, I guess, would be like try the audition process does this look good does this look good and just go with that and then the second tip would be like go with your first gut as soon as you grab a paper that you're like this looks good go with it like don't try out 900 other designs like go with the one that looks good first because otherwise you could be there forever trying out all the different designs to see what would work when really like the first one would probably be fine the other thing that I like to do when I'm mixing patterns like this is I try to mix patterns of different like sizes. So like a big pattern, a small pattern, and a medium pattern together. 
So like you'll notice that one of them would be kind of a bigger pattern, one of them would be like a small fine dot, and then the other one would be more of a, like a medium one. So you can see on that card I've got a little bit of each, and I feel like that helps create balance between the card instead of having like four large print designs. And then um, my other tip would be to go with complementary colors um, or to go with colors that are in the same color family. So for example, like you could go with warm tones on one card or just cool tones on another card. Or on some of them you'll see that I've got like complementary colors like reds and greens together or oranges and purples or no orange and blue yellow and, and yellow and blue orange and purple I don't know maybe look at a color wheel my concussion isn't helping <laughs> and so then once I picked out all the patterns and stuck them down um, with my score tape I just grabbed them and, and started going on all 20 cards and then I tried to use up those other scraps that I had off to the side there which you can see I'm like whittling down I've only got five left and at this point I was like determined that this was going to be one of those no scrap your scraps kind of cards process video kind of things where I like use every single scrap that I made and I did I had five pieces left and I just kept whittling them down little by little and I love it because I used every single scrap on all of these cards and I made 20 cards with no scraps and they're super bright and colorful and you have all the different patterns and everything and it just makes me super happy. So I hope it makes you happy too. And I hope you'll give it a try too because it was really fun to play and to kind of give yourself this challenge of like I will use all of the scraps. And so you had to like, you have to kind of find a place for each of those patterns to go. So I'm like, I have only a couple cards left, but I somehow have to make those last two pieces fit. And I ended up being able to do it. Like I had one piece left over and I had to go back through the cards just to find one that would work and I found it. So it worked out great. And there you have it, the cards. Once I was done with that, I moved on to the die cuts. So I had all these die cuts and I just put them in a little bowl on my desk. And I started working one by one. I'd pull out a die cut, see if it would work on the card. If it did, I stuck it down. Pull out the next die cut, see if it worked, stuck it down. If it didn't look good on a card, I just looked through the cards to find one that would work. And I basically started with the biggest die cuts, like the big flowers, the big hedgehogs, the big hot air balloons or whatever, going one by one to see which one. And I wanted at least one die cut for each card. I ended up putting two on some of them, but I started with one die cut per card and just went with whatever looked good and whatever I felt like would stand out and look cute on the card and just went one by one all the way along until all the cards had at least one die cut. And then I went back through the die cuts going onto the medium or small size die cuts, adding some of those to just take it up a notch. Um, like there were some clouds and little tabs and extra little asterisks and things and I stuck those down. There were some die cuts that had like phrases or like mushrooms. I don't know. I didn't really like those. So I didn't use those. I have a thing against mushrooms. <laughs> so I did not use the mushrooms. I just kind of put them aside and was like, I will not be using this on my cute little card here. The rest of them I kind of just stuck down. I even used some of those tabs that said things like dream or wish or whatever and kind of tucked those into the layers and use little hearts and clouds and whatever things. This is like probably the most fun part of the project for me is when you're kind of just like going along adding the die cuts on top of the layers and the cards actually came together really quickly. Like I was shocked how quickly these cards came together. So I made 20 cards. It took me about two hours to make all 20 cards. So I don't know how long that is. Let's see. That means it took me about six minutes a card, which to me is a good amount of time. And I was having fun doing it. And then at the end, I had 20 thank you cards, which was really good because my stash was like depleted. So I stuck down all of those die cuts and then I moved on to use those um, enamel dots. So I mentioned that I wanted to use one six, by eight, one six by six paper pad, one set of die cuts, and one set of enamel dots. 
and that's all I used on these cards. I grabbed these um, enamel dots. I think they're jelly bean soups. And to be honest, they were really not sticky. Like I tried to stick them down and they weren't like staying stuck and it was driving me bonkers. So I ended up using a little bit of like Tombow Mono Aqua Glue to just like add a little dollop of glue on the card before I stuck down the enamel dots and the hearts just because I really didn't want them to all pop off later. That would have been really annoying. So yeah, and you can see I would just add one, two, three, most of them I added in like odd numbers, like threes, um, but a couple times I just added like one or two and I tried to go with colors that were already on the page because, or already on the card because there were already so many colors going on. So I would kind of pick like a color that was in the die cut or a color that was in the background or black or white because I felt like that would go with everything. And it was so much fun. Like even look at that cute little pineapple, it's adorable. And then just a couple enamel dots and the card is like almost done. It was easy and fun. So my plan for these cards was to do the backgrounds, do the die cuts, do the enamel dots, and then add the sentiment on top. So I'll get to the sentiment in just a minute. But I went one by one through each card. And when you're batch processing cards, that's probably what I would suggest to you is like do a step and do it on all of the cards and then when that step is done, move on to the next step. Does that make sense? So I, once I had finished doing that, I pulled out the stamps that I was going to use. And I will leave a name for each of the stamp sets I used in the description because I don't have them in front of me. And I want to finish this video. So, yeah. I just grabbed some stamps that said thank you or thank you so much or thanks ever so much. And I stamped them out a bunch of times on the white cardstock that I had left over from cutting down the card bases. And then I just trimmed them or fussy cut, cut them out and just put a phrase thank you on every single card. And basically how I decided which phrase or which sentiment stamp to put on each card was basically like I would just pull the cord over and look if it needed a big thanks stamp if it needed a medium thanks stamp or if it needed a tiny little like word strip and yeah it worked out well I had I think I stamped each stamp out like eight times so I definitely had more than I needed left over but it worked well so there you have it there are my 20 cards I'm going to slow this down for a second and just show you each one a little close up so you can check out how cute the, the bright colorful cards turned out I love the way that these thank you cards look. I love how bright and colorful they are and how I had fun just playing with like 20 pieces of paper, one pack of die cuts, one pack of enamel dots, and some stamps for my stash. It was like easy, quick, and fun. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this no scrap your scraps video and that maybe it challenges you to make some thank you cards or other cards using your supplies and try to avoid making scraps. Or alternatively, you could have done these just with scraps too. That would have been fun also. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you have a lovely day and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize again for all of the audio, shadows, bad filming light up, setup, but, and the concussion. I apologize for all of that, but I love you. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for following me. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video, leave a comment, and join me on my Scrap Your Scraps Facebook page. Bye!